Okay, we are recording. So hi, welcome to today's um, session of the Self-Love Re Self Revolution class, or what do you call this, journey? That's a good way of putting it. My name is Barry Sobey. I am um, known as a passionate champion for the divine feminine, also known as the love doctor, relationship coach, and really working in the area of self-love, self-support, and self-empowerment, because truly any relationship starts with the one within. Today's topic, um, actually, I had another second title show up behind me, which has said that um, stop playing the blame game, it's killing you. And that's a literal statement, by the way. Um, but I was saying I was also going to talk about uh, shame, guilt and resentment as well, because frankly, they are the four horsemen of the apocalypse, the way I describe them, because all four of those things we tend to use to, what's the word I'm going to use? So flagellate, <laughs> we beat ourselves up with them. So I want to talk about how, how we use them, because we do, I mean, I've done a lot of work, I'm still using them, just so you know, it's not something you say you're, you're ever over them, but how, what you do with them once you've gotten through them. So I call it use the blame game because it's one, it's, you know, it, it does alliterate very well, but also it's something we do a lot. And we have a challenge in this world, not more people joining us, we have, we have the opportunity in this world to notice the contrast we have with life. And the thing with blame is it's something we use oftentimes to excuse ourselves from doing something we think we should do. I'll say that again, because that's really the crux of this. Blame and also, um, well, blame, shame, guilt, resentment, to varying degrees, are predicated on the fact that we are blaming somebody else or judging somebody else because they're doing something either that we don't like or so doing something that we think we should do ourselves. It's an excuse to not do something in some ways. Now, that's one way of looking at it. The thing about blame is it's when we put responsibility for how we feel on somebody else. Same is true with resentment. And then guilt and shame. Well, let me, let me break it this way. Blame and resentment are pointing outwards. Shame and guilt are, blame, are pointing inwards. But the actual that are sides of the same coin, two sides of the same coin. All of these things that we use are basically ways in which we tend to be self-defeating. And as Mia is very, very passionate about loving ourselves, taking care of ourselves, respecting ourselves, appreciating ourselves, it's so um, vital for us to remember that we keep doing things to stop doing that. And I'm passionate about people stop doing things that hurt themselves. You know, why would we do that? So the way, the way I'm going to switch gears to my resentment first, because blame is really the soft form of resentment. We blame other people because they did something to us and we feel upset by it. True, what we're doing is resenting them because they did something that we are judging harshly. And the reason why I said that, blame, that stop playing the blame game is killing you is because when you get deep into resentment and hurt feelings and upset and judging and blaming other people, and judgment is, by the way, the key of all of this, we're actually putting pressure on our own immune system. So when I say about how blame is killing you, it literally is depleting your system. Do you ever notice when you get angry, afterwards you might feel drained? Or if you're feeling resentment about something, you feel like you don't feel like the energy to do anything? That's the depletion of your own system. So all of these things I'm going to teach you, I'm going to show you really the core elements how to heal this you actually find yourself feeling more empowered and also feel healthier, which is the side effect of this. So what triggers blame and resentment in particular, because they're a pair, is that we have a perception about other people being a certain way. And when they don't do that, we get upset. And so it happens a lot when we're growing up as kids, where we blame our parents because they didn't do the thing we wanted to do. And it starts very young because we come in, <laughs> we don't have any framework when we come when we're born. We don't have any structure about how things should be or shouldn't be and how things are. And when we're four, five, six years old, our parents may do things that upset us. I should say they do things that we get upset about. Let's be more accurate about that. They don't upset us. We upset ourselves. We have the power. And so we blame our parents because we didn't get to have the ice cream we wanted. Or we didn't get to go to the right school when we're older and going, I want to go to school and we didn't get to go there because our parents didn't do whatever it was. You know, because our parents put, lived, put us in the wrong neighborhood or something like that. So the blame and resentment are very much paired together because they are ways we protect our self-esteem. This is really badly wired. We protect our self-esteem because we put the pressure on somebody else to fix something. Now, this is part of a much bigger conversation about codependency I've talked about before. 
And it's also a much bigger piece of the puzzle because you start realizing that we think that other people have power over us, which is a lie, by the way. People can do things that we can't do, but we have control over our own, excuse me, we have dominion over our own autonomy, our own feelings, our own equanimity. So when we're in blame and resentment, we're basically victimizing ourselves by being upset in here about something somebody out there did. And think about that logically, that doesn't make any sense. Why would we disturb our own peace because somebody else did something? But we do that because somehow society teaches us this. So that's, that's the external piece. I'm gonna put that on, I'm gonna bookmark that for a moment, come back to that in a moment. I'm speaking about the shame and guilt pairing as well, because really they're the same thing, just pointed inward. I think I told this a lot in the other class I taught about how resentment and guilt are two sides of the same point. When we have, which I'm doing this piece now, when we are resenting somebody else for doing something or doing something, or how, what they said, how they treated us, whatever that was, we have, let me say this another way, when we put that pressure on somebody else, we're judging them as something as being wrong. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to see because, okay, hold that second. Let's go to guilt. So I was going to switch gears to guilt. Guilt's easy to talk about first. <laughs> Basically, I'm Jewish, I can say this. Guilt is something that we are trained on when we're kids by our parents, if you're Jewish or a Catholic, particularly, but everyone gets it. Guilt is the pressure we put on ourselves because we believe we, we did something wrong. Guilt is something self inflicted because we somehow think that we did something that wasn't right. The reason we do this is because we don't, um, we don't reconcile doing something wrong with being a good person. See, the, the way I said this in the last class of talk was that guilt is, we feel guilty because we believe we're good people and we do something bad. The thing is we can't actually be a good person and do something bad without something in between to allow that to coexist. You know, good people don't do bad things because good people do good things. That's the rules, that's the way we're wired. So what guilt is, in a way, maybe put it this way, being a good person, we do good things. Uh, guilt, guilt shows up because we did something bad or wrong or um, upsetting somebody else. And then what happens is we put guilt as a wall in between the two. We actually create a separation from being a good person and doing bad things so they can coexist. It doesn't work very well because ultimately what you're doing is you're, you're trying to maintain two different states, which is good things and bad things. But the thing is what guilt does is it creates a wall between you and everything else. Guilt is a protection, but it's also a barrier to being free to love and express and connect. So when you learn how to heal guilt or release guilt and start recognizing what you did as being, what you did badly as something just happened, then you get back to having your power back. Resentment, as we're trying to get to earlier, is the same thing pointed outwards, as I mentioned. So again, resentment is about other people. Guilt is about ourselves. The same thing happens, though where you have a vision of somebody else, a parent, a partner, especially in a relationship, or a sibling or a coworker as being a good person, but they did something bad and we don't know how to reconcile the two together. So we put a wall in between it called resentment. And we call it a wall, but it's basically a, a barrier to allow us to coexist the belief about the person with the experience of the person, either it's ourselves or other people. So guilt and resentment are two sides of the same thing which comes down to we're judging something is wrong. Now, the blame and shame are the same thing. Again, blame blames somebody else. Shame is feeling the same thing ourselves. There really is the same energetics. We feel shame for doing something wrong, bad, or whatever else we judge ourselves as, or we blame somebody else for doing something wrong, bad, or we judge them for something they didn't do. Ultimately, these four things, I joke about being the four horsemen of the apocalypse, is that there are four things that we do to ourselves that limit and demean who we are. Regardless of whether it's somebody else or ourselves, the end result is we're depleting our own energy. We're suffering ourselves because of what we're doing internally. Now, first of all, if you're doing that because of what somebody else did, logically it makes no sense. As I mentioned, it's like we're busy attempting to suffer because somebody else did something. Why would we do that? But we've been trained by our society to feel blank, to feel that. So blame and resentment are self-defeating, -de as is shame and guilt. The reason why is because all of those four things are predicated upon being judgmental. Oh, yes, judgmental, that wonderful thing that we do in life. 
And when we're judging ourselves or judging other people, again, we're not affecting anybody else. When you resent somebody, they don't know what's going on. You can resent somebody who's been dead 50 years, but the resentment's still going on because they did something way back when, which they can't change. It's already happened. We, we still feel the effects of it. And we haven't done anything to fix that because there's something righteous about being resentful. It's really interesting how we believe things that are like, I'm going to feel indignant and upset and I'm going to fold my arms and sit here and suffer. That's the Jewish mother syndrome, which I know that a lot of Jewish people recognize. But it's a recognition is that it's not effective. That way of being is self-defeating and it does start to deplete your own system. You start feeling, end up, end up being a lot sicker. I mean, there are studies showing where when people keep persisting on doing self-abusive things, anger, resentment, judgment, blame, guilt, all these different things, their immune system suffers. So when I'm joking, when the title saying, you know, it's killing you, ultimately it can do that. So this is how to be healthier, happier, more whole, more free, more loving. As I said, the core element of all these is, is judgment. Judgment is like taking a nail and banging yourself over the head with it. Judgment is a means to, let me say it this way. Judgment is something that only good people do. Bad people don't care. Bad people do bad things. They will, they will hurt people. They will be upset. They'll resent. They'll judge. They won't care because for them, that's normal. So if you don't feel any sense of resentment or, or blame or judgment in your life, you may not necessarily be seeing how good you are. But I'm looking at that conversation because that, that goes down a whole other road. When you feel guilt, shame, blame, or resentment, the truth is you are a good person who's feeling that you did something bad or you're judging somebody else for doing something bad. The key with judgment, the first was to recognize that you're doing it. The second part is to do something about it. And I talk a lot in my work about forgiveness because the F, the F word, forgiveness, is one of the biggest things that I can teach people because when you have this tool in your tool belt, it will change your life. Forgiveness is something that we have not practiced enough. And there's something you do anytime you want in your life because it is a resource that is available to you anytime you need it. With a couple of caveats. Forgiveness has been um, over, overused in, in teaching. Like you just go, you forgive yourself and you're fine. It's like, well, not exactly. Forgiveness, basically, the way I, I describe it is, is when you recognize that you put yourself in your own prison cell, but you have the key in your hand and you can let yourself out. Forgiveness is that key. Because what you're doing is saying, you know what, I'm not going to carry this judgment, this, this burden of blame, judgment, guilt, shame, any of that stuff on my shoulders anymore. I'm putting it down. I'm not throwing it away, putting it down, resting, allowing it to be free. Because when you start recognizing that, for example, with resentment, you're saying the other person's bad, some person is a good person, this is bad, and I'm feeling upset about it. When you start to realize that you can let go of the behavior and see who they really are, then you come into a place of peace. That's the part that this forgiveness allows you to do. What forgiveness doesn't let you do is forget things. You know, people say, you know, forgive and forget. No. Forgiveness, because forgiveness makes you, um, so it gives you more freedom, but also makes you more aware so you don't fall in the same trap again. When people forgive, there's this, this feeling like, and this is something that if you go back in the Bible, I think you can read it more clearly. I'm careful. I'm not a Bible scholar, by the way, about, about how um, Jesus talks about forgiveness. It's not about turning the other cheek to ignore things. It's turning the other cheek, but keeping your eyes open. So you don't go do that again. So forgiveness, for me, has to have one key thing with it, which is feeling. And in particular, the thing I'm talking about is compassion. Because for many people, forgiveness happens up here, but it doesn't work there. I've tried this many times and I've proven it doesn't work. Forgiveness is an internal process that requires your heart to be open because forgiveness comes from a place of compassion. When you are feeling guilty about something that you did in the past, and I've got a laundry list myself of when I think didn't do things right or made mistakes, or I, um, what's what I'm looking for? Thought I knew better but didn't do better. I'm sure you can relate to some of these. The way out of those things is, excuse me, the way I thought I could get out of these things, let's go back to that, was I just simply ignore them. I put them away and it's like, I'm just gonna move on with their life and be fine. But then funny thing happens is they keep showing up later on in life, either as 
repeated experiences or as memories that pop into your awareness. Well, it does for me, maybe it does for you too. What I became clear about was those things would never go away until I actually allow myself to forgive myself for what happened. And this is the thing with forgiveness. And I've got some, there's some, um, there's a workbook. There's also a, a practice I recommend I can send you if you want to find out. I'll tell you at the end how you can find out how to get those. Just, I'll give you those things. Forgiveness about, for me, it's not something you just do mechanically. As I said, it requires compassion. The thing with forgiveness is that it is not forgiving somebody else for what they did. It's forgiving yourself for judging what they did. Because forgiveness is the uh, antidote to judgment. So forgiveness doesn't forgive behavior. It forgives judgment of that behavior. So if you did something in the past that you're not happy with, not proud with, like you maybe you crashed the car or, or you uh, yelled at your parents, whatever that was you did many, many years ago, you're not forgiving the behavior because it happened. It's done. It's already over. What you're forgiving is the judgment you're still carrying about that behavior. So the thing is, what we forget to realize is that when things happen, they are done. But what we do is we carry in our heads and our minds and our memories all the pain, the suffering, the wounding of those things that happened in the past. That's the piece you forgive because that's what you can fix. I mean, in some situations, if you did have an argument with, with, you know, with your partner, you forgive yourself for the judgment at some point. You can go back to your partner and say, you know, I want to apologize because what it did was out of line. I was upset. I was feeling them out of line and I want to make peace again. So those you can do that sort of thing. You can't change what happened, but you can change things going forward. And again, when you've already done the forgiveness work inside, where you come from has changed. So rather than going to them to beg their forgiveness, which is a lost cause, by the way, other people forgiving you doesn't change things, just to be clear. As much as you might think, oh, they say, forgive me, I'll be fine. Mm -mm. The forgiveness work is internal. This is a totally internal process. Yes, it's nice when they forgive you. What they're really doing is telling you they stop judging you, which they may or may not have done. But either way, if you're still carrying judgment inside yourself, their forgiveness doesn't fix it. And that's a hard truth for some people to get because a lot of people carry this thing, well, I did this, this horrible thing to this other person and I won't be okay until they forgive me. Well, maybe, maybe not. If you forgive you, if you forgive you that judgment, you're carrying that burden you're carrying inside first, yes, if they forgive you, it's wonderful, but your life doesn't stop until that happens. So self-forgiveness is the way through. There's one of the things I talk about is Colin Tipping has a book out called uh, self um, Radical Forgiveness. In fact, he rewrote the book and called it a second book called Radical Self-Forgiveness because that's the real work. And one of the things I recommend is a worksheet on his site. I've got the worksheet as well. I can send you, which is a Radical Forgiveness Worksheet. Rad- excuse me, Radical Self-Forgiveness Worksheet, which is a, a, it's a great process, although it is a bit mental for me. That's the reason I... I so you can use it, but the one I have is, I think, better because it takes you more emotion, into the more emotional level. So let me recap a little bit. Self-forgiveness requires a reflection on yourself and requires compassion with yourself. So when something happens and you start just going, I'll oh, just forgive myself and you like, do, the, do the, whatever it is, the Catholic faith where you do the rosary beads, whatever that is, that is a mechanical process that may or may not work. Why I talk about compassion is because self-forgiveness has to be at heart based process and the fastest way to do self-forgiveness that works is when you can open your heart and have compassion for yourself so the way when i've worked with my clients what we've done is really get to the point of what the judgment is about the upset the hurt feelings the wounding inside to the point where they start to feel what's going on underneath it the wounding the hurt feelings inside the emotion comes up because when the emotion comes up what i love about emotional work is it moves things more quickly Emotions are like having liquid lubrication for the healing. When you feel the wounding, what happened, the upset, the hurt feelings, and you usually move out of the judgment into a place of just the heart because there's a feeling of love that shows up and the compassion. Compassion is one of these great gifts that we have that we forget to use to basically love ourselves with. Self-compassion is one of the most powerful tools we have. And when you have self-compassion, that for me is when forgiveness actually works. Even though forgiveness is a mechanical process, you forgive yourself for the new steps to go through, the compassion is what makes it work. So to transform these experiences of separation, judgment, blame, um, discomfort around other people or yourself, compassionate self-forgiveness, there we go, compassionate self-forgiveness is the way to do it.
So I've given you a lot of stuff very quickly. So I'll entertain questions if you have any or thoughts or sharings because I want to make sure you get this. It's a it's a potent tool. So so um, actually, what we and I just saw your message. Um, I'm going to give you all my email address so you can email me because it's easier because I won't be able to remember necessarily because I won't be writing all the stuff down. So just to show you now, if you, if you can't say for the whole call, my email is my name. So basically it's barry at barryselby.com. My site is barryselby.com, by the way. So you need to contact me through my website, which is barryselby.com, or you can email me at barry at barryselby.com and mention this call and you want to get the, the, the worksheets and I can send them to you. So that's one thing. So any questions or thoughts about what I've said so far? Hi, I'm, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. How are <laughs> I <got> you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Um, so I'm just curious, too, about, you know, things that people didn't do to our, to us. You know, that's e easier, maybe, to forgive or maybe not. Um, but what about when they actually do something to you, like physically abuse you this or sexually abuse you? And that's something that's hard to let go. And even understanding that, you know, that 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 they had, their actions were caused by their own pain. I mean, I can intellectualize all of that, but right. Right. So this is the this is where I talk about this. I mean, I'm, what I said basically works this way too, but it's not just as easy to go just flip the switch and it's fixed. Right. Trauma healing is a lot bigger than this. Forgiveness is part of that process. And having compassion in the process too, because again, in simplistic terms, if somebody has sexually abused you or wounded you or hurt you, whatever it was way back, whatever it was, 10 years ago, five years ago, even two weeks ago, if you're carrying the wounds inside, you're still suffering. And, you know, there, there's a quote about how the best revenge is to live a successful life or live a holistic life. I think the best revenge is to heal yourself. Yeah. Because what they did or didn't do isn't really ultimately about them as much as it's about how you take care of yourself. Yes, they shouldn't let, let this win. What I said about earlier about, you know, Jesus to turn the other cheek. It's not about forgiving and forgetting. It's like forgiving and then take care of yourself so you don't have to happen again. So in the process of dealing with something that traumatic, there, there's a lot more, I mean, in my coaching with my clients, we've gone deep before in the work. And so coming to a place where you, first of all, as an example, in your own journey, go back to that part of your life and become the adult, especially if it happened when you were younger, is mm -hmm. to be the adult to that part that was the, the person who was back then abused, hurt, wounded, and basically nurtured them and loved them up to being whole again is part of the process. And forgiveness again and compassion, especially, are parts of that journey to come back to wholeness. Mm -hmm. Because what that person did may be unforgivable, but the burden you're still carrying is forgivable. So I made it very clear the difference about that because people again think about if I forgive somebody by you know forgiving the resentment or the judgment, I'm letting them off the hook. No, you're letting yourself off the hook. Yeah. And again, it's that thing where you have the key to your own jail cell. You let yourself out of. Yeah, that may, that for me is like it's very golden because I know when I am in that moment of forgiveness and I feel like the forgiveness for myself, I could breathe. And, you know, all of those things said about the physical, I know I lived that to the nth degree, you know, and to the point where I became chronically ill. So like, I understand. So like, for me, part of that illness came from the abuse that I had. And part of the illness came from all of these, all the guilt. And by the way, I, I have an Italian mother. It's just, she's just there is equal as Jewish mothers, <laughs> but it's silly that guilted you. <laughs> Yeah, you know? I understand. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, the guilt and, you know, shame and, you know, and, and the resentments, all of those things. It's like, I feel like I've liberated myself from a lot of it. And yeah, I mean, there's stuff to still to work out. Mm -hmm. So and, and I don't know, like, I would love, I feel like finally, like, no, finally, but I feel like I'm at a point where I feel more free. And I just want to be freer and freer and freer. So that's the that's I guess my aim. Being that I'm a human being, 
you know, perfection, is it in my lifetime? Maybe, I don't know, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> but, the, you know, we're, we're always a work in progress, right? <laughs> well, the thing is, and, and from my own background, because I've, I've got a graduate degree in spiritual psychology, and we talked about in that principle that we are spiritual beings and the human experience. And as spiritual beings, we are perfect. And we yeah. take on the human form to deal with the imperfections and the choice points and the experience along the way. So I understand exactly what you're saying. Right. The, the thing is that the wholeness you're seeking, the journey you're on is absolutely the perfect place to focus on because it is up to, it's your life, not theirs. Right. And the, the, the paradigm that we, we, we live through where we are dealing with parents who don't understand us, who don't necessarily, I mean, I, mean, I grew up with I grew up in a Jewish family, as I mentioned. Um, my parents were together until my mum passed away in 2012, and I watch their relationship. And there's so many things they missed. It wasn't like they were hurtful or wrong; they just weren't aware. Right. And so I have a great deal of compassion for their relationship. Looking back, as much as they were very loving and codependent, and very very codependent, actually, one well, reason why I do this work because I had to learn how to fix that myself was recognizing that what they did was the best they could do with what they knew how. And it can be very easily done as a spiritual bypass saying, well, they did the best they could. It's like, well, yes, and what am right. I still judging inside? Yeah. Yeah, I think the that's book. the key, right? Because usually it's like you hear all, well, your parents just did the best with what they had. Yeah, but there's something missing to that. And that's perfect <laughs> what you just said. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where the work is. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's the thing is that we get to take our life back by saying, you know what, I'm not going to sit with that. Not to say I'm going to judge them, but I'm just going to say that I choose to live in a more whole, healthy, and loving life. So what I didn't get there, I'm going to do for myself. Correct. Absolutely. Which is why, which is why we're in, why this group is doing what it's doing, why Mia's doing such amazing work because she's helping everybody gain the skills that maybe we didn't gain when we were kids. So that's why I love this work. Um, there's another piece that was coming up. Um, oh yeah. Something, something, while you were talking, something just came through my mind. I remember talk, reading articles about how they say, well, especially with, with which, you know, the, one of the other painful things is the, is the area of rape for women. Yeah. Um, when, when people say, you know, she, she asked for it, that's for me is one of the things that gets my, really gets me upset more than else. So, I mean, it's funny because I'm one of a guy, not a girl, but it's like the feeling that, that the excuse that can be made is that somehow she set it up. So she's to blame for it is so heinous in my understanding. So when I look at that conversation, yes, that is judgment, I know. I'm not being neutral and centered about it. But recognizing the fact is that there's no way that I would want any woman to suffer beyond, like, if it happens to her, it's happened, I can't fix that situation. But what we're gonna help her do is forgive herself so she's not carrying the burden of that any further. Because any sense of the reasoning, the judgment is to excuse other people. Yeah. And that isn't about this, what this is about. I mean, I've watched what's happening out in the world where people doing things, like individuals doing things to groups of people where I just feel wish I could change that. Right. But what I can do is my own inner work. Right. And be visible talking about how, you, you know, to be self-empowered, to love yourself and to be more self-supportive in this process. You know, I when you become... So oh, I'm sorry, like about you saying you're you're judging and then you feel an anger. I think it's just because of your compassion, because you can't think as a man, why would you want to force yourself on, on another person? I think right. that's, that comes from a deep sense of of honor as you as yourself as a human being and for the woman as a human being, you know, and that compassion and that's something. And I think that anger for you maybe is judgment, but I think it's an anger that creates it's not like you're going out there like crazed, angry. <laughs> you're going out there with your anger and trans, for me, this is what I feel, like you're transmuting or transforming this anger into something that's, that's good for the world, like what you're doing now. Yeah. yeah. But that's the thing is, is that when, it, it is, it is the, the, the energy that, that inspires me to do something. That's why, that's why I teach, that's why I coach, that's why I write my book and all the, all the work I do is to help other people have more, loving, conscious, caring life, because that's, that's what I think we all deserve. So yes, it's just that I'm also aware that when I start reacting to stuff, that's my cue. That's the thing I'm getting better at. And that's what yeah. your work is about, is that when we react to something, how far past that point do we go, oh, hang on a second, right. I don't need to do that anymore. 
<laughs> right. You know. Right. Thank so you. that's the power of this web. You're welcome. Thanks for the questions and thanks for sharing. Any other questions? Any thoughts? Everyone else is like hidden, so I can't see. <laughs> any other thoughts? Any questions? Was I that clear? Okay, that's good. I don't see any other questions coming up. Let me see if there's anything else I need to share whilst if any of you are preparing your questions. Um, but again, if you want, I, again, I have, I have the Radical Forgiveness, Radical Forgiveness worksheet that I got from Colin Tipping's website. You can get it yourself from there or you can email me, I'll send it to you. And I have a uh, self-forgiveness guide workbook that I, I wrote. Basically, it's a distillation of my own process from my, so my graduate program. So I'm sending that to you. So again, just email me at barry at barryselby.com. I'll send it to you. Um, check out my website, it's barryselby.com. I have my signature program, my books on there, my coaching. I have a video series on codependency. Oh, let's speak about that for a second. Codependency. <laughs> Part of the reason we get into resentment and blame and judgment and all that stuff because we tend to be in codependent relationships with other people. And what, I'm, what I mean by that is that we are thinking that other people should do things for us a certain way. In my famous quote that I use from Jeremy Maguire, which you complete me, is the ultimate statement of codependency I've ever heard and the most overt one. Because what it sets up the situation is that somehow we're not complete ourselves. And so that, that person makes us feel whole, which means that person controls how we feel. This is where resentment shows up more than any other place is because we somehow think that the person, whether it's a primary relationship or a parent or the government, is that we think they should do something a certain way. And when they don't, we get resentful about it. The reason we're getting resentful is because we, we are letting them control how we feel. So one of the things about resentment is a great clue that maybe we're in a codependent relationship with somebody or something where we've let ourselves become like giving them it's almost like being a puppet, giving them the puppet strings. Um, on my website, as I mentioned, a bunch of other things. There's a um, in the in the navigation it says um, cracking the codependency code. There's a five part video series that a friend and I put together. There you just watch them. They're on on the page, which is called which is about codependency. And one of the things we used to talk about is the puppet master, because what we do in um, codependence in the codependence is we give us somebody else the control of our feelings. Now, when we're born as kids, we don't generally have autonomy and, and totally self-reliance. We, we, we are codependent with our parents because they're the ones that basically control our survival. You know, they feed us, they clothe us, they keep us safe, keep us shelter. So our parents is natural, but we don't stop doing that is the problem. Codependence is a um, way of life for most people. And it's what under, underlies the reason why we get into resentment and blame other people, because if we were really totally autonomous and independent ourselves, although the opposite for me in, in relationship is not independence, is interdependence. Oh, someone's coming in late. Welcome to the group. So the idea of understanding is that when we are in a, in a codependent uh, context, a codependent connection, is that we continually feel that they must do things right or we're going to be upset. So the trap we fall into is thinking that that we aren't in control of our own state, our own way of being. And so one of the reasons why I love noticing those things out there is because it's a reminder going, oh, where am I feeling like I'm depending upon somebody else to do something for me? Versus where am I not, where am I, where am I able to take care of myself and realize that, that I'm asking them to do something, but my life doesn't pivot on it. It's that difference. So codependency is one of these cornerstones I, can make, I may make that another topic when I'm speaking on the 31st, so I might use that then. But codependency is the um, playground in which resentment and blame really, really show up. So if you start to feel like somebody did something wrong and you're judging them, what is it about them that you feel is controlling part of your life? It's a clue. It's a sign. It's an indicator. And when you start to recognize these things showing up in your life, you're going, oh, boy, I need to do some work because I'm realizing how much I've got investment in other people's way of treating me which is not healthy ultimately. Yes, you want your lover to treat you wonderfully, but if they make a mistake or if they forget, are you going to get into resentment about it? Or are you going to be in place of going, okay, maybe I need to remind them. See, that's allowable. Because we also have this challenge where we think people should know how we feel and should treat us without telling them anything. We think they should be mind readers, especially our relationships. Like if they loved us, they would do this. 
Maybe they don't know how to do that. Maybe you want to tell them. I mean, that's a nuts and bolts. That's a very like inner piece. But recognizing that this playground and is a playground of emotional expression and interaction is a teaching, learning experience. And when you come up with resentment or blame, especially those people who are in your life currently that's going on, what is it about them that you're putting responsibility on them for? Now, we can carry this feeling that everybody should be nice people. Nice hope that they're going to be polite, they'll treat us well, and it's going to be okay. Unfortunately, it's not true. People, people cut us up on the freeway. People, you know, do things that, that hurt feelings. Nine times out of ten, it's because they're not even aware they're doing it. So we get into an upset feeling, resentment. I mean, it's happened. I mean, I, I live in Los Angeles, and, and on the freeways, there was a lot of road rage for a while. This is going back a few years now. But people get upset about somebody cutting them up. Meanwhile, the person who cut them up was probably even, wasn't even aware they were there and was driven off to their day and going about their life as if nothing happened. Meanwhile, the person who was cut up, cut off in their car is carrying this, this fuming rage, upset feelings for hours afterwards. That's why it's not healthy. You might feel righteous about it. And one of the reasons why we do get into resentment and blame is because we want to be righteous about our radiation. Right? We're good. That means they must be bad. And I'm going to feel good about that. That doesn't work. It's a false premise. Righteousness is a, um, another means of basically just piling on the, the, dark, the, the, the anger and upset on ourselves. Now, being right versus being righteous are two different things. So I'm not speaking about right and wrong. I'm talking about righteousness because it's a trap we fall into. And I know I'm touching on languaging from religion. I am a very, I'm a bit of a um, heretic in a sense, coming from a Jewish background, but being on a spiritual path for over 30 years. I'm very clear about how um, religion isn't best, the best model for teaching people to love fully. It has a lot of rules and restrictions that put things in the context of sin and judgment and control because that's the way they're built. There's one of my favorite phrases I'll say for another time, maybe. I believe that, as, again, as we're spiritual beings and a human experience, we are perfect and divine beings spiritually, but we then live in this this physical being that is imperfect. Now it's imperfect because we're all different. There is no, per there is no perfection in the human form, except they're all perfect because we're all perfect individuals. So when you recognize that the choice you have is to own that versus to blame or judge or feel shameful about that is the way you get to fully express and enjoy it. So I'm here to remind you not to, not to change your mind, but to remind you that you are already whole, that you are already worthy and you're already deserving. And forgiveness and compassion are ways that you can remember that, or should say to take off the patina of those judgments and blame and resentments that you're carrying that are, then you forget who you really are. So that is kind of my core message. I think that, that puts it together. I think there's anything else I want to speak about now. Any other questions, thoughts before I, because I'm realizing I've come to the end of, when I feel like it's, there's nothing else to say, it's like I'm emptied. If you have any questions or thoughts? Yes, Claudine. Just, just a thought about like, you know, we're talking about like, you know, um, expecting others to treat you really well, or, you know, somebody forgetting or whatever, but it's interesting. It's like, yeah, it is all about self-love because, you know, we, a lot of times when you be where when we're unaware and we're treating ourselves like garbage yet we're expecting another person to treat us like gold because it's like i can't treat myself that way but i want you to treat me that way i want you to validate that i'm i'm worthy right rather right. than feeling our own self-worth so um and it's funny you're talking about the self-righteousness because i was walking you know in the park here recently uh i do every day but i live in new york Manhattan and um you know sometimes you see the self-righteous behavior and, and we all do it I mean I'm not going to say I never do it we, we all do it but you yeah. know and that, but now I have more of a sense of humor and I realize oh yeah okay so I'm looking at this person I go yeah self-righteousness it's a bad look and I'm like I should know <laughs> I, go, I should know <laughs> you know so yeah, yeah. And, yeah I just uh, wanted to uh that just came back because I it was like 
it's just like, yeah, exactly what you said. And like, I just said it to myself the other day and it's so true. And it's like getting, and, and then having compassion for myself because I'm like, I was in that moment because in that moment, maybe I, I felt the lack of something and, mm -hmm. and I could have just felt a little more love for myself and, you know, I wouldn't be so judgmental against another person because, you know, <laughs> I'm so good, you know? And I'm just right. like, well. <laughs> but that's the, that's the thing, though, is, is, that, is that we are doing the best we can. You know, perfection right. is, is, is so, if, if you're judging yourself like you're not being perfect because you made a judgment, oh my God, you've made a judgment. It's like, no, right. deal with it. You know, do the right. work so that you can be more whole because this is all practice. You know, it's like, I believe we, we come, I believe we come onto the planet. This is my philosophy is that we come on the planet to practice things, try things out, experiment, explore, do the work because. When we're in the spiritual realm, there's nothing to do except enjoy the light or whatever that is. Right. So why not treat this as a place to explore versus the be on an end or what's possible? Because we make mistakes. It's part of the human experience. Yeah. And if we were always per perfect, I and mean, we are perfect in our imperfection, right? But if we were all right. perfect beings, we everybody did everything correctly. It would be boring. Was, oh, right. It would be like, <laughs> oh my goodness, get me out of here. I'm never coming back, you know? <laughs> in a way, right. yeah. It's, that's the funny thing. It's like, you, you careful what you wish for, so to speak. Right. But, but things that we said about if you wanted other people to treat you a certain way, um, what came up for me reminded me is the five love languages. If you're in a relationship with somebody, and they don't necessarily love you the way you want to be loved. If you did, for example, both take the five love languages test, you might discover, oh, I need them to tell me they love me versus just touch my arm. Right. Whereas they've been trained to do it by physical touch because that's the way they're, that's the way they're, they're wiring is. And so they think they're loving you, but you're not feeling it. So it isn't necessarily you need to teach them, but it's good to sometimes learn from each other going, okay, so what are we not getting here? Oh, when you say this, this doesn't work for me. So maybe we can change how you say that so I can actually hear it differently. Versus arguing, saying, you should never tell me this. And, you know, there's it's, it's, it's a different way of doing it. So you can, in a relationship, especially oh educate each other. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. Certainly. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? No? All good? If there are any other questions, I'm going, to quick, I'm going to summarize this and then wrap it up so you can get on with your day and I can get on with my day. Um, nope, I don't see any, any flashing microphones, so we're okay. Well, me. I have a follow up. Oh, oh, yes. I'm sorry. I have a follow up. Yeah. Hi. So you Hi, mentioned Anna. that. Who are you? Hi. Um, Hi. You mentioned that forgiveness, when we forgive, we don't, we're not forgiving the person for what they did, right? But we're forgetting. The resentment that we're holding on to is that correct forgiveness is a Did I understand that? yeah yes forgiveness is a self-applied tool to forgive your own judgments i should say it's to release your own judgments the thing is that you can have compassion for what they did i mean it's hard to be compassionate for somebody else's behavior when you're in the middle of the upset when you're judging and blaming them, it's hard to have any compassion for what they did. So you start with compassion for yourself first. It's kind of, in some ways, it's kind of like, the reason is very vague, like the idea of the oxygen mask on the plane, where you put your own oxygen mask on first before you put on somebody else's. In a way, what you're doing is when you forgive yourself first and you start loving yourself and have compassion, you come to a place where you're no longer carrying that um, reaction to what they did. So then you can have compassion for what they did and who they are, because you might start looking at them from the lens of going, I see now, because I'm okay with myself, that what they did was because of where they come from or what their background is and what happens to them. Not they need to fix anything, but you can see them perhaps through a more loving space because you love yourself more. Yeah, well, that's that's very interesting. That's a new concept for me. Um, I kind okay. of like it because it, it, it kind of puts the... Um, it, it puts the the influence on me as opposed to, you know, an influence in terms of like, I can kind of uh, affect these, the, the emotions that I'm gonna have as I choose how to react to it. It's just a new concept for me. Cause I mean, it's very common when people say, will you forgive me, will you forgive me? So that right. can be applied to that kind of thing also. So I am, I just wanna understand this correctly. So yeah. when a person says, can, they, can you forgive me? Or if I say, I, I forgive, I forgive you or something what i'm really what i what you're suggesting that is an option for me is that um 
I really look at what my reaction is and forgive myself for feeling that as opposed to yes. feeling guilty that I feel that, something like that. Well, well, guilt is basically the reminder you need to forgive yourself ultimately because guilt is a reminder or a signal that we're feeling out of alignment with ourselves. The thing is, <clears throat> when, when you say you forgive somebody else, it doesn't, it's like, if I'm carrying a lot of guilt for what I did to you, something I did that was horrible, and you say you forgive me, that might have an impact temporarily. But the guilt I'm still carrying doesn't go away until I forgive myself. So it really is about yeah. the inner and work. Then, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what are the steps of actually forgiving myself then? Once I do that, like how do I go about forgiving? Just say it or is it something deeper? Well, it's it is saying it, but I mentioned that one of the core elements of forgiveness is, is having compassion because it's really feeling into it's like you say the words, but you've got to feel the feeling. So forgiveness is basically the format is really you're forgiving yourself for the judgment you placed against the other person. You're not forgiving yourself for the for, you're not forgiving them for what they did, you're forgiving yourself for the judgment you placed on them. But again, it's not mechanical, it's an emotional experience. You're letting the compassion lead those words through you. Because again, you're forgiving what you're carrying inside yourself because the forgiveness isn't about what they did. The forgiveness is about how you reacted to it internally. It's like what you did to yourself is what you're forgiving so you can be free. Right. And how I forgive myself, I get the first part. Now I'm looking at, I'm trying to just uh, understand how I go about forgiving myself because it's emotion I have to feel. So I have to just sit and try to connect with a feeling of compassion and apply that to myself. So to give you, we'll give you the Cliff Notes version because this is a little bit more, again, my, my, my workbook explains more detail and also my, my clients, if you, want to, if you want to connect with me for a session, we can talk about it, is first of all, becoming aware of what the upset is because usually it's an upset feeling first, which is sitting top of the judgment. You know, judgment is not a, you don't sit there in judgment. Where you sit there is an upset. So you have a resentment, you have, you have a sh you're feeling shame or you're blaming somebody, you're whatever it is, you're carrying around inside yourself. That's the first key. When you find time to be with yourself and start to sit with what you're feeling inside, that you can start having compassion for because when you start to connect back to yourself, you as you're carrying this energy inside, this toxicity, most of the you can be um, compassionate for yourself first. And then you can start to, in, in, internally, you can start, you can be a mantra to say to yourself this way, is that forgive myself or judge myself for whatever that is that I said, I thought about the other person, about myself. And then afterwards you can sit in places like what I really know about myself is this. Now I'm, I'm giving you the, the stem statement, the stem statement, so to speak. So the mechanics of it is in the process when you come to compassion, is saying I forgive myself for the, for, um, judging myself as, or forgive myself for blaming myself as, or forgive myself for feeling shame for whatever that is. Where the, and, and the truth is that I'm a healthy, whole, loving being, whatever that is. Again, my worksheet can help you work through that. But it's really the internal process you're doing with a compassionate container so you become healthier and whole and released from, from the suffering. Okay, I, I will. I will thank you very much for that. I, I will reach out to you uh, for the handouts that you're talking about. Is sure. it possible for you to write in your information in the chat, just to make sure I have the right spelling? Uh, yeah. And sorry, I'm just seeing a question from Philippa. Um, what do you What do you do when the upset feeling keeps returning after you thought you understood or that you find compassion? Somehow you're not getting over it. The forgiveness effect is not lasting. I would strongly suggest that the forgiveness work hasn't been completed yet. I mean, if you're carrying a wound, a ma I mean, some people I've worked with have had massive trauma from when they were very young. You know, they're, they're, I mean, I, I remember one of my clients had discovered through a lot of healing work that they'd been sexually molested by a neighbor when they were like four years old. And that was a deep trauma. So we had to do a lot of work to get to the place where there was wholeness there because the forgiveness wouldn't even stick. It wouldn't make any difference until she could really have compassion as the adult internally with a younger four-year-old inside herself. So it isn't like an A to B step. There's, there's, it's A through 17 steps to B. And that's the work it takes. Um, Anna, you know, I'll put my, put my contact in the, in the chat so, so you can find what it is. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then yeah. um, email you and just and I just ask for the forgiveness handouts and this date and you'll know what I'm talking about. That would suffice. Yes. Thank you. Type in there. And yes, just for having that. So that's my that's my email address and my site. So you can check out my stuff as well. Um, and yeah, I will send you if you email me. Let me know you want to send me the self forgiveness um, workbook that I have, and also the, the you can type, I'll send you the concept in one as well. Just so you have it as a reference. It's a different sort of format. Just so you can see which one finds which you feel most aligned with. So you can play with either one of those. So okay, any other questions? Thank you. Close, could you give me a minute? Because my, my device takes a lot a while to copy. I can only copy one line at a time. And <laughs> I won't immediate. cut you off right now. It's okay, yeah, no problem. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you quickly. Thank you so much. Sure. So any other questions or um any other shares, any thoughts? What's that, Claudine? Sorry, you muted. I, I think I, sorry, I think I put something that says speed up. On, I don't know. If, I'm sorry if that popped up on my screen, but I, just, I want yeah, to I don't really, speed I don't really you up. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I, I, I That's just simply, I think it's just a post, just a, a comment you put up there, like see the heart, same thing. So I don't know. <laughs> All right. So question was that from Anne. So Anne, your question about dealing with, with projection. You want to unmute and ask? Hi. Hi, um, hi. My question is about projection. Um, mm -hmm. I, I had a very dysfunctional family. Yes, I come from a Jewish family too. And it had to do with mental illness. Um, my father was mentally ill and he was a genius. And my mother had this elaborate defense mechanism network. And I found out later in life that she was mentally ill. I somehow didn't realize she was. And she projected everything about my father onto me and kind of like made me my father when I wasn't yeah. ill. So, so I don't know how you forgive someone, how you go through that process of dealing with someone who's mislabeled you, projected their own stuff onto you that's not yours. So I mentioned that forgiveness is an internal piece. So I what you actually do, right? So when you the the the, um, the test that forgiveness has worked is that you don't carry a lot of guilt, a lot of judgment about somebody else if you're doing external forgiveness. So when you can get to a place of compassion for both parents for what they what they were going through and what they did, and even though they treated you badly, when you're no, no longer carrying the burden of that recrimination or judgment about what they did because projection is part of that projection is basically judging somebody else's wishing they'd done something differently or, or judging yourself is all into it's all um it's like enmeshed it's yeah. really about the it's about the internal work because ultimately what they did what who they are you can't change so to speak but you can change the relationship you have internally with them and so and again it's not about letting them off the hook except it's letting yourself off the hook so what they if they're still around what they're still doing isn't something you can fix change or anything else unless they're willing to listen but if they're not willing to listen that's not going to help you at all so the only thing you can do is the relationship with yourself and the relationship to the mum and dad you have inside yourself because mm -hmm. you're still carrying them even even when they're gone you may still carry that feeling about them which is still inside of you it's nothing to do with them anymore because they've when they've left the planet it's up to you to you still got the, the, them inside you. So the more you can come to in terms of loving them inside of you by loving yourself first and to step free of that projection they were carrying or she was carrying, then you have the freedom to really love yourself first. I have been working on that um, Good. for the past, oh gosh, about eight years I've been working on self-love. I never had that in my life before. Right. Yeah, most of us weren't taught that, frankly, growing up anyway, but you had an extreme case, certainly. But glad you're actually doing the work and, and being in Mia's group is going to help you with that as well. So I'm glad you're doing it. I mean, they're, they're both gone. My, my mother passed away in 2018 and 
My dad passed away in 1991, but I actually did make peace with him before he passed away. He mm -hmm. apologized to me. He actually apologized to me for what he put me through. And I, that really touched my heart that he saw that. Yeah. But the thing is, your mother not doing that shouldn't stop no. you being free. Right. That's the, the major problem I have is with her, not really with him. So one thing you can do, and this is this is just something I'm free sliding this one, is you can, if you, and this is something that I do with, with Gestalt work with my clients, is having you basically have a situation where you set up a space like in your own room, where you can put two chairs opposite each other, and you put her, imagining her in the other chair. Mm -hmm. And you sit in the first chair, and you can vent at her, you can speak to her, you can ask her what she did, why she did anything else. And you can then, if you choose to, sit in that other chair and let your mind internally, your experience of her speak back to you and actually have mm -hmm. a dialogue with each other. And you may even get to a place where you can bring her to internally to actually apologize even. Not that you necessarily require it, but it's all internal in you. All this stuff is inside of you anyway. So why not set yourself up for success? You know, that's one way of doing it. There's other ways too. But the truth is your freedom is inside of you, same as the judgments and, and that weight you're carrying inside of you about them. It's your choice about freeing it up. I mean, it, even, it goes much deeper than that, where she basically alienated me from both my mother's and father's sides of the family. I don't really have a relationship with my family at all. That's painful. Mm -hmm. I so, feel and cut off. Do you have a way of reaching out to them? Well, I kind of have a superficial relationship with my sister and that's about it. So doing the work on yourself first, the healing work and learning yourself and getting back to the centeredness, because how you then approach them will change. Because it may be, I'm not, not saying it's a guarantee, but it may allow you to connect with parts of your family that are still around, one from a different place, and two, you might discover a whole new relationship and start from scratch even because it's no longer going back to fix the old one because it's done. But you can mm -hmm. start a new relationship with them, possibly. So that's possible. Again, these are options. Okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I know that it's hard to condense this into just a few minutes. because yeah. <laughs> I understand, yeah. History behind it. But I feel you, and thank you for sharing that. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? Any thoughts? I think everyone's written down my email address and my website by now. Yes. Um, I will be back again on the 31st, I think is my next time I'll be teaching the group and see what else comes up to teach at that point. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, you've got my email. If you want to have a session or talk about or get some more deeper work, let me know. Um, I thank you for joining me and sharing your questions. I appreciate you being as interactive because it makes my work easier to be able to interact and answer questions versus just talk at you. That becomes flat for me. So thank you for your questions and your, and your sharing. I appreciate your vulnerability as well. Um, that's it. So thank you again. Definitely treat yourself with love and respect. Take care of yourself, meaning that how you talk to yourself, how you look in the mirror, how you interact with the world starts with compassion. The more you can do that, the more you change your own experience and the healthier you get. That's my philosophy, so to speak. So with that, I thank you for watching. I will say see you in 31st, two weeks from now, three weeks from now. And uh, thank you for participating. So I'll see you again soon. I'll see you in the group too. You're welcome, Carol. Thanks for the love. And you. uh, I'll see you. You're welcome. I'll see you in the Facebook group too. So if you have any questions, you can post there as well. And I'll see you then. Take care. Bye.